Welcome back to Ken and Quick Shot, a quick review of a non com book and superhero movie. I'm your host, Terry, and today I'm looking at The Darkest Hour, starring Gary Oldman and Lily James. This is an Oscar spotlight. So, The Darkest Hour is basically about Winston Churchill becoming prime minister and his decisions on how the nation should go about World War II and fighting Hitler. Um, I'm going to be honest, you know, I'm not a big history buff. Uh, history's not my thing. Um, uh, so coming into it, you know, I, I know the major details, but a lot of the, the minutia is, you know, fuzzy to me. So a lot of this movie, I'm like, I don't even know what's going on or what they referencing. <laughs> the only thing that really grounded me in this movie was Dunkirk because we had the movie earlier with Christopher Nolan. And so I was familiar, very familiar with that situation. So when they started talking about Dunkirk, then I was like, okay, well, I, I can grasp that. I know where we are with that one. Um, but overall, you know, it just wasn't my cup of tea. Now, I would feel bad to sit here and say the movie's bad just because it wasn't entertaining to me. I would never say that. Um, I will definitely say it just was not, <laughs> it's not something that I would go for. And I only went, you know, because of the Oscar buzz and around, um, Gary Oldman's performance. So, um, instead of just sitting here trashing the movie, I'm not going to do that. I will say that, um, you know, whenever there's a movie about real life situation, it's kind of hard to critique it because it's just like, you know, <laughs> I can't knock the story or anything. This is what actually happened. But as far as the way the movie was shot and everything, I thought it was good. I thought it was creative, you know, the cinematography. I thought it kind of kept your attention. It's just the whole Winston Churchill situation, I don't think, is a cinematic one. Because when you really get down to the end of it, he didn't do much. (laughs) And so it all centers around whether he has the will to fight or does he want to give up like everybody else wants to do? And that's pretty much the whole movie. And that kind of, you know, comes to a resolution pretty quickly. So uh outside of that, you know, the movie is what it is. But just focusing on the spotlight, Gary Oldman for best performance by lead actor. I think it's a lock for him to get nominated. Uh, of course, I can't say he's going to win because I haven't seen all the other competition, but it's a lock that he gets nominated. Again, Winston Churchill himself, I don't know much about it all. So this portrayal could be completely false, but the way they portrayed him in the movie, he was very unlikable. And I just never found myself rooting for him or anything. And nothing about the story or, you know, him really, you know, makes me feel Gary Oldman did a good job. The thing that makes me feel Gary Oldman did a good job is because you know who Gary Oldman is. And if you watch this movie, that is not Gary Oldman. He loses himself in this role, not only because of the heavy makeup and prosthetics he has to wear, but really the mannerisms, the voice, every little detail. And again, I don't know Winston Churchill (laughs) at all. I've never seen video, never heard audio of him. I've seen pictures, of course, but other than saying, does he look like Winston Churchill? I can't tell you 100%, but I can tell you he created and just lost himself in a character, whoever that character is. And I know a lot of people uh, with uh, biopics, they really get a lot of Oscar buzz because it's a real easy measurement. It's like, okay. Is the, this is the real person. How close did they get to the real person? And so when they hit it is a lot of Oscar buzz because it's very easy to say, yes, he did the right job acting as opposed to a Han Solo or somebody that's fake. How can you say he did it right if the person doesn't exist? So anyway, um, I don't know if it's true to Winston Churchill, but I know he threw himself into this performance. Just thinking about acting and having to do this job, I'm like, I couldn't even imagine the amount of takes, the amount of preparation, the amount of time it would take to really get this thing right because he wasn't just some old fuddy-duddy British guy and, you know, he puts on his natural British accent and go about his day. It was really uh, a character full of mannerisms, full of, uh, you know, his own tics that um Gary Oldman had to put down. So I uh, will 100% say that he is going to be nominated. Uh, as far as the movie's concerned, 
And again, it's hard for me to give it a grade. Um, but I'm a, I'm a stick to my gut and say that it's about, a, uh, <laughs> I would say it's an 80, 80 out of a hundred, uh, you know, average movie. Oh, not average, but you know, a, a good movie, solid movie. So that's what I'm going to go with. Um, if you into the Oscar buzz, I definitely say go see it. Um, if you're more of a casual fan, um, you're probably not listening to this, but even if you are, I would say it's definitely not something you would rush out and go see. I would be fighting tooth and nail to find Dunkirk and watching that on the loudest, biggest TV I can find because that experience is way more fulfilling. And I know I'm talking about war versus the diplomacy of war, so we know it's more exciting, but I, I just mean as an immersive experience, Dunkirk is way better, so... Anyway, that's my thoughts on Darkest Hour. Go to the comment section. Let me know if you saw it. Um, if you want to see it, what are you excited about? What did you think about Gary Oldman's performance? Thumbs up, subscribe, and if you heard it here, it's official canon.